people might start joining. Um, so I think maybe should we should we start because I'm aware it's already sort of approaching quarter past. Um, but hello, um, I'm Sophie. I know most of the people on this call, um, and I'm the fundraising and communications lead for CGHP. Um, so it's it's great to have everybody here for this Global Health Cafe, which is focusing on Sierra Leone. So we've got three presentations from different partnerships and different activity um, and five presenters. So, um, yeah, please enjoy the presentations. And if you've got any questions, we'd really encourage you to just pop them in the chat box. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to run through the presentations back to back and then we'll have um, chat and questions at the end. So we'd also just ask you to just stay on mute while we've got presenters uh, talking um, and then feel free to come off mute at the end, pose any questions that you have. Um, the Global Health Cafe is all about discussion and it's very relaxed and informal. So yeah, please bring any questions that you have to the table. So um, I'm gonna introduce our first speaker. So um, Cecily is joining us from Freetown um, and Cecily is the partnership lead for the King's Global Health Partnership in Sierra Leone and she joined in summer 2021. Um, she's an occupational therapist by background and has worked in Asia and Africa um, and has also been involved in HEE's uh, Improving Global Health Fellows uh, Fellowship Programme in Myanmar. So Cecily, are you happy to take the floor? I'm gonna <clears throat> try and share my slides as well as speak, but if I can't, then I might get you to share them for me. Um, no so problem. Uh, let me see if I can, no, I think, would you mind sharing, have you got the slides with you? Would you mind sharing them, would that be okay? Yeah, and absolutely. I can, um, uh, and I, I, yeah, that'd be perfect. No problem. <laughs> so, um, I'm really, really delighted to be here. So thank you for the invite. Um, it's just, uh, it's so great to have an opportunity to um, to present to you all. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to talk a little bit about our work kind of um, generally and uh, in the context of um, Sierra Leone specifically. Can everyone see the slide okay? I can see half of it, but I know what they look like. So it just seems to be a bit... Um, it might be my computer which has been playing up, but if everyone else can see it, that's that's great. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, the King's Global Health Partnership works with um, health facilities, academic institutions and governments to strengthen health systems and improve the quality of care in four countries. So we work in Somaliland, Sierra Leone, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Zambia. And we work to bring together health um, academic and international development expertise from King's College London and the NHS um, and, and kind of link that together with our international partners with the EA. And what we want to do is educate, train and support healthcare workers, strengthen healthcare and training institutions, enhance national health policies and systems. And we work to connect UK and African health professionals providing training, mentoring, hands-on support, and we undertake collaborative research to inform policy and practice. And we also support our partners by providing access to funding, networks, and development opportunities. And through these long-term partnerships and our global volunteering scheme, we promote skills and acknowledge um, uh, skills and knowledge exchange uh, and look at kind of mutual learnings that can contribute to building a stronger health workforce and improve quality of healthcare, both internationally and in the UK. Um, next slide, please. The focus of our work um, is very much on, <clears throat> on improving the quality of care and strengthening the health workforce. We see these as the WHO does, as the kind of core building blocks in a health system. We work in partnership, as I said, with African health facilities, universities and governments to ensure that this change is really sustainable, um, providing training and mentoring, but also engaging in collaborative research to influence policy and practice. And our research portfolio is growing and we've actually got two NIHR grants at the moment, one focused on deepening our understanding of stroke in Sierra Leone and the other focused on surgical health uh, surgical system strengthening. Um, next slide, please. So Sierra Leone has got one of the most 
fragile health systems in the world. So both the civil war and the Ebola epidemic has contributed to the severe financial and human resource constraints in the health service. Um, healthcare isn't free to access and trust in the healthcare system is low and both of these things are barriers to utilisation. Communicable diseases are a leading cause of death and disease in Sierra Leone. Malaria is the single biggest killer, accounting for about 38% of all hospital admissions. Um, there's an estimated three new TB infections per 1,000 people each year, and the national HIV prevalence is 1.5%. Unfortunately, non-communicable diseases and injuries are also increasing. Cardiovascular diseases, cancer, diabetes, chronic respiratory disease, mental health um, injuries, especially from trauma and road traffic accidents, are also sadly increasing and responsible for premature death and disability in Sierra Leone. The health workforce is also quite fragile, with less than 300 doctors in the country. Um, and according to the Ministry of Health and Sanitation, in 2016, there were 7,107 health professionals providing patient services across the country. Um, and compounding this is <clears throat> the fact that significant numbers of doctors are leaving Sierra Leone, as there's limited training and development opportunities. Um, the College of Medicine and Allied Health Sciences, COMAS, is the only source of medical and pharmaceutical training in Sierra Leone. They train about 30, 40 to 50 doctors and uh, 30 to 40 pharmacists a year. But a report compiled by the MOHS in 2016 noted that about 24% of all health workers were over the age of 50. Um, and the national retirement age is 60. So while they, they might be training enough to replace retiring doctors, they might not be training enough to really grow the, um, the, health, the health service um, kind of in general. Next slide, please. Um, sorry, uh, next slide, please. Um, we really want our teams, uh, oh, Sorry. So we want our teams to work collaboratively, collaborative, yeah, collaboratively alongside our partners, offering technical advice, mentoring and training, as opposed to filling gaps in rotors. And we also want to support research and evaluation, as well as facilitating access to university and NHS resources. Um, and in this collaboration, there's also a lot of um, opportunities for learning for King's Health Partners. So in order to do this, we developed four strategic objectives. Objective one is to support the development of healthcare workers through education, training, and enabling environment policy. And, and this, this looks at both formal learning, so lectures and placements and internships, and informal learning, so things like supporting um, continuing professional development opportunities on the ward. Uh, the objective two is promoting a culture of quality improvement across the health system. We want the projects that we do to be grounded in quality improvement and affect change across the institutions that we work in. We want to empower our partners to engage in all stages of the quality improvement process and have the opportunity to learn from their peers. So whilst working at a system level as well, um, the Ministry of Health and Sanitation have developed quality improvement teams. So we really want to work to use their approaches and methodologies and look for ways to formalize the QI structures in the places in which we're working. Objective three is um, to generate quality data, which stakeholders trust and use for decision making. So this means supporting the creation of data. This means supporting that the this means supporting the institutions that we work with to set up and improve their systems of data collection and analysis, so that that data can be operationalized, as well as supporting individuals to undertake their own research projects. Objective four is building the resilience of the health system and its leaders to manage emergencies. Um, and this means building resilience into all aspects of the hospital outside of emergencies and focusing on key skills such as communication, patient management and stock management. Next slide, please. So through um, a long process of, of working on building these objectives and discussion with our partners to, who helped us to, to um, to identify these objectives, we have worked. To the, we, we've decided to focus our interventions in in seven areas: um, critical care, emergency care, hospital maintenance, the laboratories, infectious diseases, pharmacy, and rehabilitation. Encompassed within four cross-cutting themes: 
infection prevention control, health worker experience, patient experience and documentation. And, and as I said, you know, all of all of what I've been saying about um, our objectives and our focus areas is, is something that we've developed um, in conjunction with our partners in country. So that's a little bit about us. And I want to talk a little bit about um, two success stories um, of some of the projects we've been doing. So next slide, please. <clears throat> the first one I want to talk about um, is our referral coordinator project. So the seeds of this project were sown during the Ebola epidemic, when a network of coordinators was created to ensure that people with suspected and confirmed Ebola were transferred to and treated in the right place. It continued after Ebola, supporting survivors to access healthcare. Many of them had complications and was struggling to access healthcare because of um, the stigma around the disease. This was then expanded again to include everyone who is entitled to free healthcare. That's children under five, uh, pregnant and lactating mothers and destitute patients. Um, and it was then linked to the National Emergency Medical Service, the ambulance service that was um, that was uh, built with the support of Quam uh, Doctors in Africa, uh, an Italian NGO who works here. Um, once that was launched, uh, the referral coordinator started to work alongside them um, and it continued to grow and develop. And so now it's a nationwide network of coordinators who connect patients to appropriate and timely care and ensure that hospitals are prepared to meet patients' needs and improve communication between health facilities. So, um, since its formal inception in October 2017, up until um, I think it was March this year or May this year, they handled over 73,000 referrals. So that's 73,000 lives that have been directly impacted by this team. Um, the time the time taken to be seen by a cl clinician has been reduced by 50 percent. So from 32 minutes to 16 minutes. Um, and in May 2021, it was formally taken over by the government and is now and the, the referral coordinator network is now formally a part of the National Emergency Medical Service. So it's formally linked into the ambulance service, which is fantastic. Um, next slide, please. Uh, uh, another success story is our shift project. So this was the four year comic relief funded project looking at reducing the malaria burden in Sierra Leone. So I'll give you a very brief summary. Um, it's hard to do justice to these projects um, in, in a short time. But when we started the project, we did an audit and found that there were 35 steps a patient had to complete to get a malaria test and 10 more to get treatment. So we worked with various departments across Connaught Hospital, including the laboratories, the records department, the pharmacy, the emergency department, and worked with them over the course of those years to reduce that to just three steps to get tested and five to get treated. And I, I know it's working because um, I've actually used it myself while I've been in Sierra Leone. Um, I think that's probably my, my 10 minutes up. So um, <clears throat> I know that's a very whistle stop tour, but um, thank you for, for listening. And I would be happy to take any questions at the end. Brilliant. Thank you, Cecily. That's fab. Um, so yeah, if anyone's got any questions, please do pop them in the chat and then we'll come to them at the end. Um, so next up, Patrick and Diana, are you happy to go next? Um, so next we've got a CGHP partnership. So um, we've got Patrick, who is a retired stroke nurse specialist who was based at Cambridge University Hospitals and Diana Day, who is an honorary stroke nurse consultant at Cambridge University Hospitals. And um, together they co-lead from the UK side, the Bow Cambridge Stroke Partnership. So um, are you both happy to go next? Yeah, would you, um, Sophie, would you put our pictures up while we talk? Absolutely, bear with me just a second. So, uh, good evening, everybody. We're going to do our talk in the form of an interview. So, Patrick, are you ready? Just unmute. <laughs> you're, you're on mute, Pat, Patrick. Okay. That's it. You can hear me now? We can. Thank you. Thank you. So, Patrick, we've worked together for many years at Adam Brooks, developing the stroke services and training the nurses. But tell me about what inspired you to start the project when you returned to Bo in Sierra Leone. Oh, Diane, thank you very much. Yes, indeed. We did work for some years 
in Anderbrook's Hospital in Cambridge. When I retired, I decided in fact to go home for six months. And within that period of time, I discovered that the whole of the there was not one single uh, hospital so, in order to bring that one to help spreading the healthcare system in Germany, I decided in order to start to establish a stroke unit in Bow Government Hospital. Thank you. And as we heard from um, Cecily just now, Sierra Leone's been through some rough times in the last decade. But um, we'll go on. And we've just got some pictures of Sierra Leone, how over the last two decades, um, times have changed. Um, so um, tell me how it all started down in Sierra Leone. What did you get the project going, Patrick? Oh, well, uh, in order to buttress what uh, Cecily was saying, and uh, to confirm that uh, Sheldon has gone through rough time. There was a civil war which lasted for 11 years. And then in 2014, Ebola came in and many, many people died. Uh, Sheldon used to be a very well-to-do country wherein they were selling diamonds, gold, coffee, cocoa to the international market. But when the war started, everything came to an end because so many farmers were killed or they ran away for their lives. So, going back and seeing the healthcare system, there we have few trained and qualified nurses, also few trained and qualified doctors. And so, I started with awareness training, wherein we identified the problem that since there was no stroke unit in the country, we should try to get one. And so, we decided to set it up in Bo, which is the center of the whole country. Because in, if you are in Bo, within three and a half hours or three hours, you will be able to get to Bo if you are in Makini, Kenema, Pendembu, or even Freetown. So what facilities do you have? You, you told me you were working with the um, local medical officer and the matron of the hospital and in line with the government plans. But what facilities did you have in Bo? Uh, when we went and we identified this particular big need, there was a word which was identified that if we can refurbish that word, we can take it over. As you can see in the pictures, uh, that is the word that was assigned to us. And uh, to be frank enough, there is nothing. Those beds, as you can see, these are beds that you cannot raise them up. So they have been there, they are stagnant. There isn't a single voice. There is no ECG machine in the hospital setting itself. If you see a patient and you think the patient is deemed to have an ECG, you have to send them to private sectors like the Egyptian clinic. And so even the nurses, because uh, they are trained and qualified registered nurses, but they haven't done anything beyond that. So all those things, we are put together. And when I went and the matron, Esther Kumba Jabi, was very helpful. She said, well, the best thing to do is instead of for you to get volunteers to come and start taking blood pressures in order to identify who are at high risk, let us try to train our colleagues and then we build it up from there. So that was how we started. Uh, and Kumba Jabi has really, really been very helpful. Thank you. So I hear even blood pressure machines and um sheets and everything are in short supply, glucose monitoring, yeah? Yeah, blood pressure so, machines, glucose monitoring, yeah, all of them are in short supply. So we don't really appreciate our facilities in the NHS, however overstretched we are. But tell me about what are you trying to achieve with this project overall? Well, as you know, setting up anything new is not easy. But uh, together with uh, people who are well enlightened in this area, in stroke or in public health, uh, we are going all out in order to make sure that A, we to try to establish this uh, acute stroke unit. For now, we haven't got any CT scan in Bo. In fact, the only private CT scan, one or two that we have got in the country, are all based in Freetown. 
And so if even we get any patients, we are not going to do any trophoresis because there's no CT scan to rule out whether it is a bleed or not. Uh, we are aiming to train our colleagues, as I said, in order to make sure that uh, the project goes on. Because if you train the first group of people, they will help you to train more people. So training of the trainers, we are doing that. And also we are trying to make sure that the quality of care that we give to our patients is really improved. And so for rehabilitation, if we do have some working tools like physio department, if we have got uh, wheelchairs, if we have got uh, zimmer frames, and these are the things that we try to make sure that we train these people. And above all, I think uh, assistants, as we call them here as a uh, physio assistants, or you want to call them as healthcare assistants, they are very, very essential because they can at least lighten the body. And so we are also aiming in order to make sure that we train some of these people. So, yeah, training the local leaders, investing in um, training across the hospital. Excellent idea. But um, I understand that it's a reciprocal exchange, um, a kind of clinical exchange of ideas and information. Mm -hmm. So tell well, me about the body system you're setting up. Well, we uh, have started training these uh, nurses and also allied professionals like uh, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, because in the whole country, we only have one uh, OT and he is presently based in the bow. And uh, we haven't got any uh, sword speech and language therapist. And uh, luckily, at least uh, Sicily was very enough and have introduced uh, their own uh, person who has come in order to help them. So we are setting this body system so that if at all, with the whole uh, plan we have at Andy Brooks Hospital, where I have worked here, I worked in Andy Brooks Hospital for almost 12 to 15 years. And so uh, we want to link it with what goes on in Andy Brooks Hospital. And so if we have got nurses who are well or are interested in being bodies to our colleagues in Africa, in Sierra Leone, then if they are cardiac nurses, we can link them together in order to make sure that they know how to at least uh, attach an ECG to a patient, how to analyze basic ECG methods. Then the, if we have got stroke nurses who are specialists, also the stroke nurses will be in to tell them exactly what to do, which research we need to do. Um, and I and as you can see, the team over there is the uh, non-communicable disease uh, director, who is on my left hand, right hand side, and then uh, closer to me is Bimba Sela, who is the uh, 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 BA for our group in Bo, looking after our team, and the last man is uh, Kevin, who is the director for uh, rehabilitation. Thank you, Patrick. So I understand that you've applied for the Burdett Trust that we're waiting to hear about and um good luck with that application um uh, just going on from the body system i we're working towards a clinical exchange when covid becomes easier and travel is more of an option is that something you could talk a little more about Indeed. In the past, we had planned two years ago. Uh, and we are going to move down to Freetown to help me train for at least 10 days training was going to be an effective training. But then uh, there was election. And as we know, African politics, uh, elections are mad by um, a lot of things. So we stopped. We said no. Unfortunately, 2019, 2020, Ola, so nobody could go. So we are aiming that if at all uh, we do uh, start this uh, project fully and we forget the funding, the first four ladies that uh, we have handed in their uh, CVs, if we succeed, we are going to make sure that the one year training is going to be an effective training. And so there is going to be an exchange of uh, personnel. A group of Thank people you. will come from you. UK and they will go to Sierra Leone and then Sierra Leone to UK at yeah. some point in time. And you've been talking, we've been talking to the medical schools and the local universities, so it, it m might well be more than the therapists and the nurses, but we'll manage that expectation. So tell Indeed. me about your uh, public health campaign. Oh, that is one of our success stories. Uh, for many, many years, people have got uh, myths and misconceptions about stroke. And so when we uh, requested to do this public health uh, awareness 
we have to go through the normal routine to the police station to get a clearance paper from there. We have to ask the district medical officer and uh, the matron. So we divided ourselves into three main groups. One group was stationed at the hospital, the other group was stationed at uh, Bojong Street, which is in the middle of the town center. And then the other group, we are stationed at uh, My Boy Road, which is where the convent is, the nuns. So we did this campaign asking people to come. We do free blood pressure, uh, glucose monitoring blood sugars, and uh, also we are weighing them, checking their heights in order to see that the uh, BMI can go. Then we discovered that there were a lot of people who were hypertensive, but it, it was unknown to them. So we referred them and asked them to come to the hospital. And indeed, a lot of them came. And we are able to make sure that uh, we give them more education and we are able in that to make sure that by the end of the day, if they are um, attached to different hospitals, because he, out there, we haven't got GP system as you have it here. There, you can go to any healthcare professional who can do your blood pressure, who can prescribe for you. And then uh, you go to the pharmacy, you buy your medications. If you want to go to a trained and qualified nurse or trained and qualified doctor, then you need to pay something because there's nothing free there. Everything you have to pay for it. So that yeah. is what we did at that campaign. And it went on very well. We had a very good feedback. And the whole, uh, there was a TV camera crew that covered us. And it is called AYV. So they broadcasted it in Britain and almost half of the country where TVs are available, they heard of it and they learned about it and they were very happy. That is great. And I understand you've now got a public health fellow working with you to look at the situation in Bo now. Um, and in the future, Dr. Marimba? Yeah, Marimba Ka is uh, uh, attaching. Uh, been attached or asked to be part of our team. And I can say thank you to uh, retired uh, Chief Medical Officer, Tony Joel. And uh, we have met once or twice with uh, Marimba and she is really eager to come on. We have collected a lot of data from the hospital setting because uh, each time these patients are coming through the outpatient department, we are doing their blood pressures, we are monitoring everything. So we collected a lot of information. Also, we went into the community where there was a COVID center and a lot of people there were having hypertension unknown to them. So all that data, we have got it together. So if Marimba just started to work with us because she said maybe once every Thursday in the month or in the week, she will be with us. And then she will help us to analyze this data. And maybe who knows, we'll try to see if uh, Professor Marcos or someone else can help us to uh, publish this work. Yeah. Thank so, you. So thank you, but we're running out of time now. So shall I, uh, just in summary, it, what a fantastic job and how much has um, gone on since you started this project. It's um, very impressive. So we have a primary prevention arm. We've got a stroke service and a ward that we still need to set up. We're very resource poor. And we've got training that's linking out to the community and other hospitals interested in coming in and sharing your training. But at the moment, it's all been run on um, enthusiasm and goodwill. And, and much of it is fundraising as the grants have been withdrawn. So Elio, starting, and we've got an art sale, which just flicked up on board there, if anybody wants to join. But thank you, Mr. Levy, what a fantastic piece of work. Questions at the end. Thank you very much, Diane. Everyone who has been of help to us, we are really happy. Wonderful, thank you. What a lovely way to present. I really enjoyed that, thank you. Um, and we can, um, we can share the link to the art sale um, in the chat box. Um, so next, um, I'd like to welcome Adama and James to present. So. James and Adama are husband and wife, and together they've established the Lung Health Centre. So this is a charity that aims to diagnose and treat chronic lung disease um, and contribute to increased understanding of chronic lung disease and causative factors in Sierra Leone. So are you both happy to present? Yes, thank you very much, Sophie. Brilliant. Would you like me to share, do you want me to share the screen or are you happy to do that? Um, I was going to share, so if you can share for me, that would be great. Absolutely. Just let me know when you want me to move between the slides.
So, like Sophie said, my name is Adama. Um, first of all, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Cambridge Global Health Partners for really giving us this opportunity to present here today. And, um, and we are very grateful. And I want to say well done to uh, Patrick, Diana, and Cecily for such a wonderful um, presentation. I can see that we all have of, um, something very common, and that is to improve the health and well being of the people in Sierra Leone. Um, myself and my husband, through our faith and belief, we are very passionate um, about helping to develop the health um, system in Sierra Leone. Uh, next slide, please. So before I go um, any further, um, I just wanted to first um, give us uh, a slight background of Sierra Leone. Um, it's a country situated in the West region um, of Africa um, of over just 7 million population. Between, two, uh, between 1991 and 2002, um, the country went through some horrific um, civil war, which led to uh, mass murders and child labor, child um, soldiers and forced labor. Um, just when it was on the road to recovery um, in 2014, the um, Ebola um, virus um, struck and that destroyed about 3,000 uh, population. Um, and after that, in 2017, you, we had the mudslide event, which destroyed many lives as well due to um, heavy rain, deforestation and swell erosion. And of course, most recently, um, the coronavirus pandemic. Next slide, please. But however, it's not all doom and gloom. I wanted to just show a sneak uh, preview of um, Sierra Leone. We can see um, the state house. We can see the weather is beautiful. Um, on the right hand side, or on the left hand side here, we can see the, the beach, uh, which is one of many, and you have the Charlotte Falls and the, Vict um, and the cotton tree, which has been in Sierra Leone, in Freetown actually, um, as a landmark. It's been there since the um, early settlers. Next slide, please. Um, however, as we, uh, we saw in Cecily's presentation, actually, um, there are common conditions that affect the people and subsequently leads to um, death. And we saw earlier malaria um, is one of the major conditions that affect people in Sierra Leone. And on the rise also is non-communicable disease, respiratory infections and um, diarrhea and typhoid. A lot of these conditions you know, have something in common and that is the environment. And often they are very managed. They are managed at minimal cost. And sometimes if they are not treated, it can lead to uh, loss of human capacity and, um, and, and lives, of course. Um, next slide, please. So um, just a, 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 the lifestyle of the people in Sierra Leone, um, it is estimated that 95% of um, homes in Sierra Leone uses firewood um, and coal to cook. And um, a lot of um, this cooking, a lot of um, the time people don't really, um, they are not really aware of the impact of what, of the firewood they cook with and that expose them to a lot of harmful substances um, such as dust, fumes, um, vapors, gases, and all those things relate to um, lung-related illnesses. And um, sometimes when these individuals are not well, they go to their, um, their local practitioner. It's often, it's, the time is not really taken to investigate thoroughly what is causing their symptoms. 
and that is because um, diagnos diagnostic equipment or the right diagnostic equipment is not really available to, to, to find out exactly what is the cause of their problems. Um, so often a lot of people, the condition is not really diagnosed properly. Next slide, please. So uh, what is our aims and objectives? So um, Long Health Center, um, as Sophie said, we want to give back. And part of that is we, we want to establish um, a, a Long Health Center that provides diagnosis and treatment for lung diseases. And uh, we want to start doing that. We want to start with COPD and asthma on a cost recovery basis as you know, deemed fit. We have trustees as deemed fit by them. And as our capacity increases, um, we would then want to start adding other lung diseases um, to diagnose and treat one at a time um, to ensure sustainability. And part of that is that we want to also help promote research into the prevalence and incidence of lung disease and as well as the underlying causative factors, which would be useful um, to aid understanding of the disease. And we want to raise awareness as well and educate the public on the effects of lung disease. Next slide, please, Sophie. So where do we want to be located? Um, we thought that it would be ideal to locate the clinic in the uh, second city, which is uh, Bo, which is in the southern province of Sierra Leone, um, simply because access to, um, to Bo will be a lot more easier uh, for people in rural areas and less um, cost and cost effective if people have to have access to the clinic than having it in the main capital city, in the, main, in the capital city, which is Freetown. Next slide, please. So what we have done here, we have put um, together um, some of those regions and really how close um, they are to, um, to the clinic. So for anyone um, coming from these different regions um, like Moyamba, Kenema, Pujeon, Kono, they are much more closer to Bo than they are uh, in, in, in than they are in, in uh, to Freetown. And um, like I said, it will be, it's for the community there, it's cheaper for them and they don't have to spend so much. Um, finance to find their way to the clinic. Next slide, please. Sorry. So offering um, our service in a sustainable manner. So we plan that um, there will be no consultation or diagnosis um, for treatment or both or for, for treatment for uh, pregnant women, children, um, and people with disability. And we don't want to have any consultation fee for low um, income earners and pensioners. However, we want to have like um, a, a reduced cost um, that will be charged for treatment and medication um, on a cost recovery basis. And then also for people who are earning high, um, we want to um, charge them, but on, again, on a cost recovery basis, and that is just to help maintain that free service and um, to ensure sustainability in the long run and of, to be for those who cannot afford it. Next slide, please. So what we have done here for Long Health Center is just a, a map of where um, we want to be at the moment, we are fully registered with the Charity Commission and, and in the UK. And in Sierra Leone, we have been given the service level agreement from the Ministry of Health and Sanitation. And the next stage is to, is to um, apply to the Ministry of Planning and Economic Development for a certified international um, NGO status. 
And um, along that, we are also in the process of having um, our fundraising um, discussion in place, um, when to launch, and we are also in communication. The next stage also we are at is uh, partnership collaboration. Um, at the moment, we are uh, working in collaboration to the Cambridge um, Hospital University. And our chair, who is um, Dr. Jonathan Fault, um, we are working with him, with him, um, his respiratory department, and the rest of the team at the respiratory department there to actually draw up our clinical pathway that will enable us to deliver that effective medical care that most people would need in Sierra Leone. And we are hoping that through them as well, we'll be able to um, have um, training for um, the nurses and the doctors that we would be um, employing to work with us. Um, the next stage also will be establishing our clinic um, in Sierra Leone, but of course that will be working in collaboration to uh, people who are already on the ground, like the Ministry of Health and um, Sanitation and some other organization that are already established. Next slide, please, Sophie. So these are our um, board of trustees who are um, very experienced in their field and they are helping us really drive um, this project forward to ensure that um, the project succeeds and achieves its aims and objectives. Next slide please, Sophie. So what we want to do is obviously we want to see that everybody um, in Sierra Leone um, have breathed without any obstruction. And we do believe that everyone should breathe. Um, we, we believe that breathing well matters. Um, and that's all for my slide. Thank you very much. Any questions at the end? We'll be very happy to take those. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, it's fascinating having started with Kings, which has been quite you know, established for a good while, then moving on to the Lung Health Centre, which is sort of really getting going. Um, so I'm very aware that we're, we're quickly running out of time, but I think perhaps uh, let me just have a look in the chat box and hopefully um, we've got a couple of questions which we can just pose um, to the panel. Um, let's have a look. Okay, so, oh, I think this is a great one to start with. So recognizing that there's quite a lot of overlap and synergies or potential for synergies across the different activities. You know, how best do we build these synergies and collaborate across the partnerships and planned activities presented this meeting? So meaty, meaty question. Um, but I don't know, Cecily, do you fancy just kicking off with that one? <laughs> I think this is such a great question. I, um, I've been thinking a lot about this lately because I feel like, so I'm, 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 I'm fairly new to Sierra Leone. I've been here about six months, but I've, I've spent time in various different countries around the world. And I, I think that, you know, we need to, we need to talk to each other. <clears throat> we need to make sure that we know what each other's doing and look for opportunities to bid for funding together. We all know that that the, the money out there is <laughs> the pots are getting smaller and smaller. And I think that there's really great opportunities to look for, for building projects together and go for, you know, bigger, more strategic works as, as two or three and really looking at multifaceted partnerships rather than just a, a bilateral partnership. Um, because, you know, just because there's so many phenomenal skill sets and and having the opportunity to bring them together we can really build quite impressive things and I, I I don't think that any one NGO can do that alone and and the more we collaborate the more we talk the more we work together the the better it is for everyone really. Absolutely I think what a great answer and especially given what's happened with the 
ODA funding cuts, et cetera, you know, have really having to think creatively about how we fundraise for different partnership activities. So, yeah, collaborating seems like a fantastic way to sort of push ahead with that, doesn't it? Um, Diana and Patrick, do you have any sort of thoughts on that topic of how, how can we collaborate better across these different partnerships moving forwards? No, I certainly agree with Cecily. Uh, we need to work together. We're working along similar lines in a very, in a, the same country. And especially for grants and money, you know, it'll strengthen any application that we seem to be working together, but it's trying to fit more, more time, more meetings into all our busy schedules, isn't it? How we make that happen especially with a, a DEMA as well, and how we work alongside you or, you know, support the work that you're doing. So any ideas would be <laughs> gratefully received. Patrick, do you have anything to add? Or, or Evelyn, I can tell you've unmuted. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, absolutely to your, your time point, um, Diana, and, and I always remember, I think it was Nigel Crisp always spoke about the, I think he was Zambian Minister of Health, who said he sometimes wondered whether he was Minister of Health or Ministers of Meetings with international organisations, because everybody fetched up thinking that they had to have a meeting with the Minister of Health. And I think that's where, you know, we can be very mindful of our partners and where we can actually come together and have one meeting with the, the local representatives, even if we're covering a range of issues across our partnerships, or if we're going to the ministry, if we can talk to people, the same person about various things, it makes the best use of our time and the best use of their time, as well as then, I think, I guess, making us think even more about, about those areas where, where, where we're aligning well or can collaborate better. Absolutely. Adelma and James, do you have anything you want to add on that sort of theme of collaboration and, and coming together? I think um, um, it can only add um, value to whatever work we are all aiming um, to do or whatever we are aiming to achieve. Um, for instance, when we met with Patrick and Diane, um, we, the first thing we told them, we are already part of one family that is CGHP. <laughs> and so the need for us to work together in collaboration um, um, will be very advantageous, not only for the people in Poe, but for um, Sierra Leone in general. And I think um, we, we did speak before to the previous clinical lead for um, King's um, and Global Health Partners, and that was something we offered as well. And, and, and I think it can only improve the service we offer. Mm -hmm. I don't see any downside to it. In terms of meetings, yeah, if we can, in our busy schedules, make time for meetings to catch up maybe once or once every, once a month or once every three months, I think that will really push things forward. Then we can know what stage everybody is at and what help they need and how everybody can join together to pull up together to make things happen. Absolutely. Maybe that's a nice action to take forward, that there's some regular meetings happening between everybody on this screen. Um, so I'm, I'm very aware that we've hit seven o'clock, but I wondered, perhaps we can just pose that final question that I've spotted that Claire has added to the chat. Um, if that's if speakers are happy to stay on for just a few more minutes. Um, so Claire says, how closely do the three projects work with the Department of Health in Sierra Leone? No. Cecily, are you happy to sort of start yeah. again? I'm coming back around um, to you. <laughs> so we we try to work kind of within ministry structures and systems wherever possible. Um, and so we're we're physically based within Connaught Hospital. So we kind of have a, a link into into and which is a ministry hospital. So we have a link in that way. But um, we're currently working on a, a project um, which is delivering training to six to people from 16 different emergency rooms across the country. And it's a Ministry of Health project. So it was um, designed by the World Health Organization and the Ministry of Health together. And we've been brought on as the technical advisors for that. So so it's a it's a really it's a really nice example of how we can kind of all work together and and that kind of strategic work is something we want to do more of because there's not much point in us 
in us doing what, what we're doing unless we're working to um, under the you know alongside our partners in the ministry and and to kind of um, working towards their priorities because otherwise we're just <laughs> we're just doing our own thing which we don't want to do. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, and that's really core and central to health partnership activity as well, isn't it? Making sure that you're aligning with national priorities and local needs. And James, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so important, isn't it? Um, James and Adama, you've unmuted. I'm going to come to you. <laughs> um, um, I think um, what we're trying to do really is to work closely with the Ministry of Health um, in collaboration, actually, and part of that is um, when we are going to be operating in Bo, we work closely with the Bo Government Hospital. Um, our service, whatever we do, probably will not involve taking in um, um, inpatient, so we'll try to make use of the Bo Hospital as best as possible, but not on that line, you know. Whenever we are running training for our, um, our nurses, we'll try to get a selected few from the government side that can join those training and help build the knowledge to help if, if I could say prevent the disease or educate the public about it. Because um, what we are looking to do is um, in, in, when they visit um, the government hospital, um, if the doctors there cannot really pinpoint what is happening, we'll ask for referral and we'll take it to the next level of diagnosis and treatment. And if possible, if they have to be admitted, we'll send them back to um, the government hospital so they can go job there and we can continue working in collaboration with the doctors there to see how best the patient is recovering, as well as share the data that they get from um, the patients. And the ministry, of course, we are looking very much to work strongly with the uh, medical school in Sierra Leone. What we plan to do actually is to get um, students graduating in the respiratory field to have um, like a work experience in our organization. And I think that will um, greatly add to the human capacity building. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, pa and Patrick, I don't know, you know, after all your engagement that you've had with the Ministry of Health, whether you have anything, have you got anything you, you kind of would want to add there? Oh, I think you're muted, Patrick. Yeah, sorry. As a, as a, as a result, uh, the Director of Non-Communicable Diseases gave us the go ahead in order to go and start uh, doing the scanning of uh, our uh, TIA patients, stroke patients, diabetic patients, and cardiac patients. And so uh, we are training these nurses and other allied healthcare personnel. It is a ministry that is paying them. And so we are really in focus. The only thing is uh, we haven't yet uh, completed our MOU, which uh, was one of the problems that we had, but uh, Evelyn is taking care of that. And so by the end of the day, once that one is sorted out, then yeah, we'll continue to work hand in hand with the ministry because we are there to strengthen the healthcare capacity of Australia and not going to do things in isolation. Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. And I'm um, yeah, very conscious that we're sort of creeping past seven o'clock and I don't want to keep everyone. Um, so a big thank you really to our speakers. And I've got loads more questions that I feel I could just keep asking you. Um, it's been fantastic. Um, and if anybody is interested in watching the event again, um, it's been recorded and we'll share that with everybody. Um, I know there's been some tech issues joining, so we'll share it with everybody that can be here today. Um, and I'm sure speakers will check with you, but if anyone has any more questions, I'm sure we could go back to our speakers um, and, and link anyone up. So yeah, thank you very much. And um, hopefully we'll see you at the next cafe. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you, Sophie.